grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome. Today we'll be looking at the topic, the love of God. The love of God. The love of God. <laughs> the undescribable love of God. Hasid, as it's called in the Hebrew context, agape. We're looking at the love of God that is uncaused, unmotivated, undeserved. The love of God that it is not contingent on anything external of it, but just solely dependent on the self existent God. I would almost say that the whole creation or the creation of the heavens and the earth was just out of the love of God. It is the love of God. That's why we enjoy the mercy of God. It's the love of God that makes us enjoy the goodness of God. The grace of God is only coming to us because of the love of God. So we could almost say everything seems to be shooting from the heart of God, the loving kindness of God, the good will of God towards his creation. So the love of God is on cost. God himself is the cause of this love. The love that God, he said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even before we, before the world came into existence, which we look at in Hebrews, sorry, Ephesians chapter 1 as well. I'm sure in Hebrews there's a place for the love of God as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a lost son that the Father loves, that he chastises. So we could see it as a common trend all the scriptures, the love of God, the love of God. So the love of God's love is on cost. God himself is the cause, is the source, is the root of his love. So the love, no man ever gets anything from God because they deserved or they merited it. It's just out of the love of God. That God answers our prayer, it's out of his love. Yes, it's good to pray. He says we should pray to him, but he could choose not to answer. He could choose to turn his eyes to something, but the love in his heart is what makes him to grant uh, our request when we pray to him. God himself is the cause of his love for his creation. God loves what he creates. I don't think God created anything that he doesn't love. Except for thou hast created all things, uh, Revelations 4, that thou hast created, Revelations 5, I think then, that thou hast created all things, they were created for thy pleasure. I mean, it is what you please in, you love what you are pleased in. So all things were created for his pleasure. So God himself is the cause of his love for his creation. God loves his creation. God keeps his creation because he loves it. God did not create a universe whereby um, you could almost say he's uninterested. It's not some kind of a gloomy, disinterested God about the work of his hand. He's excited. He rejoices over the work of his hand. There is nothing in us attracting God's love. So that's why we say that love is contingent upon God. It is on cost. I mean, <laughs> said he, he, Jacob have I love Esau have I what have they done they've not even been born so the love God has towards us is a love that actually we could almost derive it from the fact that it has no origin it's almost like a circle that you can't trace where the beginning or the end is the love is eternal it is everlasting so there's nothing in us attracting God's love he loves us because his very being is God the very being of God is love, as 1 John 4 tells us that God is love. God is love. So we see that the very nature of God, it is the nature of water to make anything wet. It is the nature of God to fly in the air, the sun to shine. It is the nature of God to love. It is the nature of God to show kindness towards his creation. It is inconceivable that God could make anything that he didn't love. I just don't see what God created. Or I mean, he saw it in Genesis 1. They were good. God saw it and he made an assessment. This is good. This is good. This is good. We never got to a place that he was disgusted about anything that he created. Of course, we now get later on, maybe in Genesis 11, whereby man, man had fallen at that stage anyway. <laughs> so man, God never created or made anything to hate it. I don't think so. I mean, Satan wasn't created Satan. He was created Lucifer, but he fell to the state he was in. So it is inconceivable for us to accept the fact that God would make anything and he wouldn't love it. He made things because it took good pleasure. Say they were created for your good pleasure and you are not going to create anything that would not um, that you would hate. <laughs> so God made nothing he didn't love. He made it to love it. And God keeps what he made because he loves it. God keeps everything he makes because he loves it. Except those, like the 
demonic spirits who have come out, who have rebelled against the loving kindness of God, who have attracted the wrath of God by the, the rebellion. Or at least we are not speaking to fallen angels, we are speaking to humanity. God made us to love us and He keeps us because He loves us. And this was probably one of the reasons, one of the top things that the Lord Jesus was praying in John 17 as well, asking the Father as well, that the love of the Father will be in us as well, that He, he had loved us even before, I mean before creation, God has shown His love towards us. And God's love is unconditional, it doesn't fluctuate, it's not high this day. You know, human love is such that I mean, it could be dependent on contingent on certain things, it could be motivated at all, but God has nothing to do. He, his love is pure, uninfluenced, unmotivated, without any ulterior motive. Because of His love, He hates to lose anything He makes. God hates to lose anything that He makes. And we could see a type in this in Luke 24 when the prodigal son. He didn't want his son to be lost, even despite the, the foolishness of the son took the son away from his presence. But yet the father was waiting till the day that he would come. And so I believe there's a picture of God is trying to tell us that God hates to lose. And he said, Do you, if you mean a shepherd, you have 100, one is lost. Naturally speaking, I mean, in Emerald's every human standard, I said 99, 100, one, okay, that's no big deal. I see God 99. But God hates to lose anything that he made. The love of God is uninfluenced. Uninfluenced meaning that it is not motivated. It is not, there's nothing obligating God to love anything. There's no uh, law or force outside of him that is compelling that you must love this being. You must love this creature for he has done this to you. Mm -mm. It is uninfluenced. It is just influenced based on God himself. The source, that's why it's called the uncaused love of God, which is dependent upon himself. There's absolutely nothing in falling man to attract the heart of God. If anything, it's just things to repel God from us. There are things, he said, the heart of man is desperately wicked. God, so he said he regretted even making man. So you could see here that there's nothing in a fallen man that makes God's heart to be attracted to him apart from the fact that it is just out of the good disposition of his heart. I'm not saying God loves the wicked and the good and he's always seeking for the good of the wicked. I think the only good God is seeking for for the wicked is a repent, to repent to him, to turn or else the wrath of God will come upon them. So when we're talking about the love of God, it's always good to also balance it with the holiness or the justice of God. So God loves us because it is he, because he himself is love. But when people when their time is up, like he told Israel, he said, look, the, um, the, the iniquities of the Amalekites is not yet full. God it is because of his love that he's patient with them. He's patient in love and long suffering. What a joy. God has set his heart upon us before the world came into being. So this is not the love that uh, we could say. Uh, it, it's a love that was manifested to us. Not That wasn't when he loved us. When He said, why we were yet sinners. Even before we became sinners, before the creation of the world, and we can see this from Ephesians chapter 1, that before the world was made, God has chosen us in union with Christ Jesus. He has made us his sons and daughters because of his love. His love was the motive behind it. It gave him good pleasure. So even before anything was created, God had set his heart upon us. So because of his love, Ephesians 1, 4, 5, God has already decided, good news translation, God has already decided that through Jesus Christ, He will make us His sons and daughters. So this was something that transcends time. It is not, whatever is eternal transcends time. It transcends whatever happens after uh, or in the time space. So time is a period between two dispensations of eternity. The eternity past, the eternity future. So we are in that bridge of time. So whatever happened in eternity past supersedes what's going on in this period of time. So that's why God by faith will bring our hearts back to what He had, uh, what He had done, which we see a lot of it in Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, what He had done in eternity past where we were predestinated. So this love of God is not a love when we were created it's not a love when we give our life to him bless god god wants us to love him but it is to the measure we understand the depth of his love if at all we can never understand we can just grow in it from one level to another so as we understand or we grow in the love of god in the knowledge of the love of god our hearts will just be open to loving him since his love for us had no beginning it can have no end like a circle we said you can't trace the beginning of a circle or the end of the circle i mean it's a love that transcends time it's a love that is eternal and it's eternal because 
he said that it's we were predestinated because of his love he chose us in union with christ before the foundation of the world if that's why even from the foundation of the world the lamb had been slain man had not even seen yet technically speaking but god in his love had made preparation god foresaw the fall and god prepared for it because of his love for humanity so love is the driving force behind everything god is doing behind everything god does the motivating factor is always his love in creation he created because of love he's the one that came pursuing or uh, looking after i mean coming is the pursuant for falling man adam where are you because of his love is the one that promised the seed of the woman will come to redeem man because of his love it was actually in his love it and uh, Adam was the man was chasing out of the garden of Eden because he said if they eat of the tree of life they will live they will be in that state man will have been in that pain in that suffering for life for eternity and so, so out of it so anything that he's doing we could almost say that it is the love of God even when judgment is coming it is out of a heart of love or else the, the punishment could be more terrible or the the good we suffer for the evil that others have done so God is always acting in love his motive is always love driven and that's why he said that in everything we give thanks to him for this is the will of God for us in Christ Jesus God is a law unto himself acting always according to his own good pleasure god always acts according to his own good pleasure so anything that god is doing is because of um what it, it always goes back to the good pleasure which became his will which became the eternal purpose and now we have the eternal plan of god so god will always be a law unto himself or anything that is making him to love anything is not it's not it's not something external obligating him compelling him to show love is a law unto himself alone and is always acting according to his own good pleasure that was created all things and they were created for thy good pleasure what a joy for the immeasurable love of god so no heart of man no tongue of angel can adequately express the infinite love of god it is unexplainable I mean, although Ephesians 3 talks about the length, the breadth, the depth, and the height of the love of Christ towards us, it's because those are the units of measurement we know, but we know that it has no measurement. Anything of God is infinite. His wisdom is infinite. It can't be measured. So when we're talking about degrees, when we're talking about units of measurement, God is beyond all such things. God is beyond being measured. The infinitude of God. So anything God is, God is that thing in an infinite measure all his attributes is patient infinitely his mercy is without limit his love is without many so no heart of man no tongue of angel nobody we can only we can only say the measure the little fraction of the measure we know and that fraction of measure that we know we just it's just to point the heart of man to god and because it is beyond what human brain can comprehend that's why we have to be strengthened with might by spirit in our inner man that we may know christ make makes his home in us and we may understand the length the depth the breadth it is beyond what our brain but we god wants us to grow in it so trying to understand the love of god is like trying to hold the ocean in your hand i mean how feasible would that be it's impossible you can't <laughs> it's it, if the ocean will even just swallow you up so you can see that the love of god is just beyond that's why we just stand silent we bow in awe. it's just nothing actually pricks the human heart like the love of god many times people think to throw laws at people okay this is what god wants you to do this is what you are not doing i mean there's a place for instruction there's a place whereby the word of god is but if it is not spoken in love every that's why god everything god is doing to us he is preaching his gospel to us in love look at the life of the lord jesus christ god manifests in the flesh dining with sinners i mean it's out of love for them he didn't want them to perish in the state where they are in so it's not just enough to be throwing scriptures at people bullying people about with the word of god if it is not seasoned with grace if love is not the factor it's just another law so god's loving kindness is his paternal favor and tender affection towards us in christ is i mean a fatherly love a father so i could almost say that there's the love god has towards his creation he made them in his good i mean he made them for his good pleasure and there's the redemptive part whereby we are members of the household of god we are members of christ because i mean the love i have love towards my fellow neighbors right but the love i have for my family is a higher level of love and god shows and 
to it. So that's what we could call the paternal favor and tender affection towards us in Christ. Because we are in Christ. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? What shall separate us from the love of God? Is it persecution? Nothing. Because God loves us because of Christ. And that love is not when we give our life to the Lord Jesus Christ, but before we were even created that He predestinated us. So the first mention of loving kindness we see in the Bible and uh, stand to be corrected, but the first mention we could say from loving kindness is that was when God was proclaiming His name to Moses in Exodus 34, 6, when He said, Who shall, who shall I tell the Israel that sent me? And He said, Look, the Lord, the Lord God. And God said He will pass before Him and uh, He will show us. He wanted to see the Lord, but God said, Look, my presence will go with you. And God was now eulogizing himself, if we call it that, with the Lord, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, and long suffering, abounding in. You could imagine that this is God, this is how God is expressing, this is how God is praising himself that I am the Lord, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, I mean, uh, long suffering, abounding in loving kindness. And the word loving kindness is really technically not really. It's, it's an English word, but it's, an, it's, 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 it's a translation of an Hebrew word, which we believe is Hasid, H-A-C-D. But it doesn't have, you can't use love, it's called almost a love, mercy, grace, almost combo together. So the translators have to just join it together. That look, if we just say it's love, because of the way love has been used in a language, it's going to dilute it. Let's just put love, a love that is kind towards his creation, that has the good intention, that seeks the highest good for his creation. So his love towards us is like no other creature attains, warrants his attention. Could you just imagine a mother and maybe they have seven children and there's just one child that they're just always giving the attention to as if the other six children does not exist but that's the love god is having towards us as his children in christ and maybe that's why in psalm 2 and hebrews 2 the angels are like what is man that you are mindful and that mindful we learn that the original greek word is that your heart is set upon him are there no other creatures? <laughs> well, so you could imagine the love God has towards us. You could almost call it the immeasurable love of God, the immeasurable, the infinite love of God, the unexplainable love of God, the love that God has towards us in Christ Jesus. It is this love that makes us to love Him, and out of this love that makes us to love one another. If we don't understand or don't, if we don't grow in the love God has for us, we will not it's just going to be because scripture says we should love one another but when we understand that this love is undeserving it is unmotivated naturally that power or that spirit of love in us will also flow to those around us it is this love that makes him bear with all our imperfections and waywardness our foolishness our stupidity and you know you and i know that sometimes we could act foolishly at times and yet God still shows his love unto us. Not that he condones any foolish act, he corrects us and he asks us to repent in a heart of repentance. We turn the food the, the prodigal son had to change his mind. It wasn't the father going to look for him where he was lost. When he came to himself, he came and the father had open hands waiting for him. So God's love is not like okay, it's almost like God is uh, God is God is going to accept any kind of mediocrity or any kind of foolish acts that we do. Every time he expects us to turn back in the heart of repentance to him. So the love God has towards us bears with our imperfections and waywardness. As we repent to him, he just loves us in affection. His love is more powerful to regenerate the human heart than his laws or than the terrors of his laws. Yeah, because it's not the law. If you say, oh, stop doing this, stop doing that, people even know without telling them the law of God or the instruction of God they have a conscience they didn't create themselves there's they, there is a there is a there's an inner con police force in the heart of every man called the conscience they know what they are doing is wrong but of course they can't help it because the mystery of sin is all that there's a spirit behind it but God what does God do he now tells us more about his love his love is like a magnet that's why in the case of our the Pharisees couldn't understand what the how the Lord was so open-hearted showing the love of the father to sinners to i mean publicans i mean to people that were despised in the society who are called you know these ones can't even come to the temple and those were the ones god went out to dush out his love to us and so you can see very much more that that love to, and many times i don't think any one of them went back to their old vomit because they just love in that wow in our weak spot you could come to us and love us oh what a joy nothing stimulates worship in the human heart like the love of god I, I, 
I mean, just look at it in the sense that let's have, let's just 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 see yourself or see ourselves growing in the attributes of God and the love of God, the grace of God. We are not saying that is everything God is. We're saying that look, understanding that is a force or is a force that actually powers every other aspect of our Christian life. If we give, God wants us to give in love towards Him. If we are walking in service in His kingdom, maybe like in the church, God wants us to do it in love. If we pray or intercede for one another, God wants every service we do. If it is not backed up by love, that's why I say if you give, give willingly and cheerfully. If you can't give willingly and cheerfully, if you don't love for love for the one you're giving to. So you can see, even when we are praying, it should be out of a heart for the Father. It's not out of compulsion like a ritual or some kind of, as if God is a sadist just trying to... Um, take our time and our resources. No, no. It should be with a heart, a willing heart towards Him. So nothing in us can merit His love. Likewise, nothing in the universe can prevent His love for us in Christ. Nothing, nothing. I could read almost from uh, Romans chapter. So nothing in us merits that love. So we can't claim that, oh, it's because we loved Him. It's because He first loved us. That's why, And that's why we keep going back on and on and on to him that look that's why i said if any man boast let him boast in the lord that we don't boast in any so-called love that we think we have towards god god says we should love him with all our heart with all our soul yes but actually we can't love him with all our heart if we don't understand his love to he said even as i have loved you love one another so first understand my love i believe that's what he's trying to say in john 13 we receive his love it as of receiving that abundance of love that is now like a, that's now the love that now flows through us because you can't give what you don't have so god gives us his love so that we can spread his love it is his love that casts out fear and calms our nerves which ties to romans 8 i wanted to read as well that what shall separate us from the love of God. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor angels nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth no or any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus for us. It is this love that calms our nerve. So in any situation in need as someone said that uh, which I rightfully believe that being a Christian doesn't exempt you from the challenges or the trials of life. What it just does it guarantees us victory. Now we become more than conqueror because we have one in us who has conquered the world for us and there's a lot of things that we need to learn in life as well. So going through those situations or challenges we count it or joy because we know the love of God. God doesn't want us never. He never wants us to doubt his love for us. So no matter what we are going through, we don't doubt his love for us. It is that is actually the force that we say faith which worketh by love. That is what fuels our faith that no, even though he slay me, yet I will I trust him as Job says. So God's love is central to all his attributes. We could almost say that the attributes of God, the wisdom of God, the power of God, the and the infinitude of God, the glory of God, the eternality of God. I mean, God's love is central to all. And how do we experience the loving kindness of all the patience of God? It's because of the love of God. So because God is self-existent, His love is not dependent on anything outside Himself. We've done this in the one of the attributes of God, the aseity of God or the self-existence of God. It's everything He is is dependent upon Him. It's not on anything in His creatures. He created them not to depend on them for anything but everything that God needs is self-dependent is self-existent in himself and so because God is self-existent his love is not dependent on anything outside himself so the love of God is not dependent on anything outside him nothing outside of God is responsible for his love towards his creation he loves his creation because he made his creation to love it because God is eternal his love can have no end the love of God will have no end because it is eternal. It doesn't have any, uh, we could say there is no intermission. There is no break of it in any way from eternity past, and it doesn't fluctuate. It's not like, oh, it's very high at this time of the year, uh, or maybe during the days of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it was very high. Oh, it has come low. It's ever the same because that which is eternal does not fluctuate. So he has loved us with an everlasting love. From everlasting to everlasting, his love remains the same. I mean, unmerited undeserved love that god has for us in christ jesus the love the has seed of god the loving kindness of god because god is infinite his love has no limits 
there is no limit to the love of God. There is no measure. You can't measure the love of God. It's like measuring the water. It's more than it's just using the water in an ocean. But that's immeasurable. But if you look at it, it could even be measured if they take the diligence, if at all. But the love of God transits that. It transits anything, any examples we could paint or parallel or allegory we have here in the universe. So because God is infinite, His love also is without limit. God loves us without limit. And He proved it by coming and manifesting in the flesh and also becoming a ransom for us i mean we fell two people fell in the ocean and one was delivered the other was left <laughs> the fallen angels were just left to domination but here was man god rescued man god is the one coming to rescue man the love of god wills the good of all and never wills evil on any god never i don't think he ever wills evil over anyone he said his thoughts towards us are good and not at peace and not evil peaceful thought he has towards us i don't think there's malice in god you can't find envy in god god is god because god is good he said thou art good and that doeth good it's because god is good that he does good it's because god is love that's why he shows love god is light god is love what a joy what a joy so he's lawful and his love for us in in his love for us he never wills evil on anyone because if god wills evil in his heart it's going to happen I mean, the thought of God carries so much energy, just like we as well, because He made us in His image. So, God's thoughts towards us are thoughts of peace and not of evil. His love disposes Him to desire our everlasting welfare. So, we could almost say, you could love certain as a person. A father could love their child or mother love their children. And um, there are certain things they wish to happen in their life. Maybe they want to buy them a house, let's say they are off to, mar to that age, or they want to buy them some things, but maybe because of the limitation of the resources that they have. And so their love just ends there. It's just a desire, it's just fantasy. But that is not for God. God has that good heartedness to us, or kind heartedness to us, and He also has the power to back that thing. So if God wishes, for example, in His sovereignty, He's able, or in His omnipotence, He's able to secure it. So He has a good heart towards us. He has a good heart to increase, to bless us, to make us enjoy all things that pertain to life and godliness, to the glory of His name. He now has a power to now give us the power to have wealth. So it's not just mere love that doesn't have a power to make it a reality in the life of the objects that you are loving. We do God more honor by believing what he has said about himself and because what the enemy tries to do as God said as God said is just trying to pervert or twist the word of God like he came to meet with Adam so God wants us to believe him for is that God is love that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us God proved his love towards us and he keeps doing it today so even whatever we're doing God wants it to be motivated by his love when we are praying that's why our hearts are turned to a temple of praise because of the love of god the mercy of god the goodness of god the wisdom of god because we cannot help but be full of thanksgiving to him we are just grateful grateful for life his mercy towards us are new every morning his compassion does not fail great is his faithfulness i mean for what what did you and i deserve i mean did that deserve to be alive any day it's out of just the loving kindness of god by loving us he has made his heart emotionally attached to us whatever affects us affects him as well and that's why the angels were asking what is mine that you are mind your mind is full of man mindful of him you have your heart set on him what's so special about this creature they are even falling and yet your heart is it's just the love of God. It has no explanation. Angels can't express it. Man cannot express it. No words can communicate it. It's just the mysterious or the infinite love of God. By loving us, he has made his heart emotionally attached to us. You know, love is a thing of the heart. And so God has made his heart attached to us that whatever, that's why he's easily touched with our infirmity. Whatever we are going through, God knows it. It doesn't mean we stop there, but of course, in the place of prayer, the platform he has created, we make our heart desire known unto him. He said, don't be anxious for anything. In everything, in everything that by prayer and supplication, we let our desires be known unto him. Sovereign as he is, he has let his heart be bound to us forever. I mean, it's the sovereign God, the omnipotent God. I mean, why? I mean, it, it's, you could almost imagine that God, you have a storage space and uh, you have 100 gig or so, and here you are, you have a ton of things that you want to save into it. You'll be very careful what you're allowing to be stored in that storage space. And because you're like, this thing is going to be exhausted. But no, 
that's not for God. So when he has just allowed his heart, he has just opened himself to be bound to us, man. Anyway, God doesn't have storage space, but he has given us because the heart of God is infinite as well. What a joy. God is not one gloomy and uninterested in his handiwork. God rejoices over his handiwork. Maybe I should even read Revelation chapter 5 at this point. God rejoices over his handiwork. He said they were created. Revelation chapter 5. Or is it chapter 4? I think it's chapter 4, verse uh, it's chapter 4. I said, I said chapter 5 earlier on. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and they were created. They were created for your good pleasure. They were created, and the translation they were created for his good pleasure. So God is not a gloomy, uninterested or disinterested being over the work of his hand. He rejoices over what he has created because he made what he made to love it. He keeps what he made in order to keep loving it. God hates sin, but when men turn to him, he responds in affection. Yes, nobody said no one that I will by no means cast any that come to him. No sinner ever comes with a heart of repentance and God said, no, I'm not interested. I've had my own quarter for today. Come another day. Never. Never. So he doesn't like the sin, but no, he doesn't hate the sinner. It is the sin he doesn't want because of his holiness. And now when men turn to him, he just embraces them in love. God in his love willingly gives of his own, whatever the cost. I mean, to prove love for anything, it is what you're actually giving up that actually determines. You can say all you care that, oh, you love this, you love this, but people just want to find the taste of the pudding is in the taste, right? <laughs> I mean, so it is the, um, uh, I mean, it is, it is how much, is coming out of you that the time is truly truly if you love it and you will give it time you will give it attention and god did that in manifesting in the flesh not just manifesting in the flesh going through a gruesome death in the crucifixion of christ god in christ reconciling the world to himself dying and becoming a ransom for man could you imagine it a king giving up his throne to now die for the subject is peasant and yet today all the joy that is purchased with a price so the love of god is the pillar upon which the universe is built it is the and that's why whatever you have done out of hatred on this earth here the universe itself is going to fight against you because the very pillar that holds this world together is built on love it is love the whole universe the heavens and the earth it's out of the good pleasure of god that they were created and so this is why god is showing goodness is showing his mercy to his creation and this is why when people like in the case when abel came murdered abel god said his blood i don't know who that the case creation was like look <laughs> something has happened on earth yes yeah, something is that's why sometimes some of these natural disasters we experience some of them are not uh, uh they are not without a cause of man breaking certain things maybe doing certain things out of uh, out of ill motive and one way they trigger some certain things in the universe don't let me go to that region psalm 63 verse 3 because your loving kindness is better than life my lips shall praise you so you can see that even our praise life our worship life is flowing from that stream of the love of god understanding and growing in it no one can ever fully comprehend it but god wants us to understand the length the breadth the depth of it and because as we fellowship with one another because no one has that custodian only god himself so as we are studying it as we, so even when we are reading the bible we are reading it with the lens of the love of god so it's not even on condemnation even when the lord corrects us or probably reproves us it is in love and because God doesn't want us to do things just for the sake of doing it, God is no rapist. God wants things to be done organically and he doesn't force salvation on anyone. He stands at the door and knocks. If anyone opens, he comes in. So God wants us to do that to him. God, Romans chapter 5, God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So God has made this, he made this known. This love was not when we accepted him that while we were yet sinners even before we were sinners before creation because we became sinners in adam in creation but the love he has for us transcends creation it's actually from eternity past so god commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners christ died for us christ died for the ungodly his grace was there he even the, the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world and this is why the love of god is the we we'll call it that the fuel or the the hope the nerve center or we want to call it the sun through which a lot of his other attributes flow 
the infinity of God, the patience of God, the loving kindness of God, the mercy of God, I mean the grace. So just as it is the nature of water to be wet, that is to make any, you can't pour water on anything and it will be dry. It's just the nature of water. You can't help it. If you pour water, things is going to be wet. If you don't want it to be wet, don't pour water. It's the nature of the sun to shine. You can't stop the sun from shining. It's the nature of birds to fly fish to be in the water without that ecosystem around them they will pass out it is the nature of god to love it is the nature of god to love without motive it is the nature of god to love infinitely it is just in he can help it in my own assessment god can't help it but to show love even in the place when there are judgments coming upon the earth or judgment coming upon the people it is out of love look at what happened in nineveh I mean, God was like, the wickedness of these people have gone unto him. And yet, God was looking for, God didn't want to punish them. He said, fury is not with me. I think Isaiah says that. I mean, the fury is not with me. God didn't want to punish them. He had to look for his servant to go to them. Even when the servant, Jonah, wasn't want, going to go, he found a way to just get him there. And he even went there, he wasn't even interested in their salvation. But out of the love, you could just imagine the extent God went through to bring salvation to that city. So in his love, God is delighted in all he has made. God is delighted in the handiwork of his hand. He's delighted in everything that he has made. And I don't think there's anything God has made that God is not delighted in. Apart, I'm not talking to fallen angels. I'm talking to humans, to humanity. Because he said, all things were created. He said, so you are worthy, O Lord. Lord to receive all the glory, honor, and power for you created all things and for your will they exist and they were created. God's love is inconceivable. After the fall, he pursued man until he found him. He pursued man until he found him. So he's the pursuant of man. It's not man that was, not Adam that was looking for God. After he fell, it wasn't we. We weren't the ones looking for God. It is God that actually came down to manifest in the flesh for us. And that, I mean, <laughs> how else do you put it, Lord? He now took it further steps by even dying for us. And that what other what other sign do we need to for for us to experience or for us to see the fact that He loves us unconditionally? So that's why we say it is inconceivable. It is just inconceivable to imagine that after the fall, God is the first one. God is the one asking Adam, "Where are you? Adam, where are you?" And even after Adam was giving excuses, he's still the one that also promised that the seed of the woman, that is him manifesting in the flesh, would come to bruise the head of the serpent. What a joy, what a joy, the love of God. So God is the one who set his heart upon us. What is man that thou art? You are mindful of him, Hebrews chapter 2. So we can see that part that it's the heart of the heart of God, Hebrews 2, 6, I believe. The heart of man, the uh, heart of God is full for love towards man, humanity. I mean, just imagine for us to have a space in the heart of God. Even you, not just humanity, yes, the whole of humanity, but for us individually, He gives us personalized, customized attention. Like there are no other being on the earth here. I imagine, it's even said by the church that even God attends the funeral of every sparrow. <laughs> Could you imagine how God, because Jesus said in Matthew 6 that even the sparrows, the Father looks after them, how much more we? So you could imagine, oh, the love that God has towards us. He said it's happening. A man's heart is everything to repel God. So for we have everything in us to make God just be distant to us. I mean, who is it that can approach his throne? It draws an unapproachable light. I mean, holiness that is, I mean, unqualified. Holiness that is complete, beyond what we can imagine. And yet, in that is love. He loves us in spite of us. Could you imagine? Ha! Huh? You just say your heart just melts down in adoration, in thanksgiving. And it doesn't make you judgmental. Because if you think God loves you because of certain one to it doesn't mean we are not doing things that pleases God. But even when we are doing things that pleases Him, we also go back to say, Lord, it is because you are the one working in us to will and to do for your good pleasure. We don't try to take glory for it. Or else we are going to be seeing ourselves as better than others and just as another Pharisee or Sadducee in the making. So God wants it that in anything in us, our heart is just bowing in adoration. God, this is you. I couldn't have done this if it is not you that gave me the grace. You are the one walking behind the scene, walking mightily in me that we are who we are. I am what I am by the grace of God. So, but God, who is rich in mercy, Ephesians 2 4, God is rich in mercy. He now says, For his great love, wherewith he loved us. So the love, the mercy, of God that comes to us is just because of his love. So the love of God 
opens up a lot of channels of things towards creation. So mercy is able to come to humanity because of the love of God. Grace is able to come because of the love of God. The patience of God, the long suffering of God, the power of God, the strength of God. I mean, we enjoy all this because the hope of it is flowing from that fountain of the love of God or the ocean of God's love. That's where we could say that a lot of the things we are experiencing today, the loving kindness, the loving kindness for his loving kindness and just forever, Psalm 136. So, but God who is rich, very rich in mercy for his great love, great love, wherewith he loved us. Even while we are yet sinner, that it is by grace we were saved. God shows mercy because of his love. So, God is compassionate because of his love. So if the love is not there, thank God is there. It can never be taken away from because God Himself is love. It's the love of God that now makes connects every other thing that makes it. So that's why God doesn't want us to doubt His love for us. And that's why many times He opens our hearts. We are praying and we need to be strengthened in our inner man because something in man, I mean, something in man suspects the love of God. The fallen man naturally sees God as an inspector, an angry judge that is just ready to condemn them. That's the natural state of fallen man. But God, through his word, through his spirit, is now telling us about his love, sending his word to us that he loves us, he cherishes us, so that we can repent and come back to him. Love is the reason he joined himself to us. I mean, why would he manifest in the flesh? If God didn't want us to experience him, his love to experience everything he is he won't manifest in the flesh he will have just left us in our fallen state and wait for the lake of fire and threw every one of us in there it is because of his love he has joined himself to us he has made us members of his body could you imagine <laughs> that he has made us one spirit with him could you imagine he has made us partakers of his nature he has called us his sons and his daughter he said for me to live is Christ he said in him we live we move and have our being it's all motivated by the love of God so it is his love is the reason God has joined himself to us he has joined himself to us in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ he has joined himself to us by the eternal life of God that is in us he has joined himself but to us by being one spirit with us by his spirit so you could imagine what God has done for us all the joy this is why our heart is always grateful to God love is why the thought love is why his thoughts are always good towards us even his chastisement is love driven so the love of God Jeremiah 29 verse 10, 11 Jeremiah 29 11 that I know the thought I have towards you thought of good and not of evil to give you a future and to bring you to an expected end Jeremiah 29 uh, verse 11 Jeremiah 20, 11, 29 verse 11, it says, For I know the thoughts I, that I think towards you, says the Lord, thought of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So God wants us that. God is always thinking loving thoughts towards us. God never thinks evil of any one of us. God is always mindful of us. His mind is always good to show kindness unto us. And this is why our heart is always full of thanksgiving. In His love, He always seeks for our highest good. So whatever we are going through, we should never die. Say so we should count it all joy. Because many times certain things come our way, it's because maybe God wants us to learn certain lessons. I don't mean that God throws sickness on his children, but I just mean that certain experiences, some of them are caused by our foolishness. And if we only admit it, it's going to be faster we get out of that wilderness rather than trying to be self-righteous before God. So many times he's always seeking our highest good. He said he won't allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear. Even when we in our foolishness, we get ourselves into what we are not supposed to. He said he will also make a way of escape. So in his love, he always seeks for our highest good. So even whatever the situation is, ah, God will turn it around. He said he will even restore the years, the locusts and the canker one have eaten. So this is why everything we see in life is without lens of the love of God. To examine it from the love of God. That, ah, wow, this God must be doing something and he even makes us work together for our good. No one ever got anything from God based on merit. His love is undeserved. The love of God is undeserved. No one ever got anything from God because they deserve it. And this is why we can see the reality of this love in what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us on the cross of Christ. There are no greater love than any man do than for a man to lay down his life for his friend. So today we've been able to look at the topic, the love of God, the immeasurable love of God, the love that transcends any kind of thing that we can imagine, the highest form of love, a love that is unconditional, undeserved, uncaused, a love that has no limit, it has no beginning, a love that is beyond whatever we can describe in this world, a love that is always seeking the greatest good of his children, greater love as no man than this, that a man lays down his life for us. 
us his friends we could almost say that almost every attribute of god we could see that love is there god is the, because god is self-existent his love is dependent on him and not on anything outside of it and so we can see that that love was made real to us in the person of the lord jesus christ the high they say no greater love can any man do so god's love is on course god's love is unmotivated by anything outside of him god's love the reason god loves us is because of god himself the love of God, the source of it is God himself. God, it's the heart of God, like the loving kindness, the kind-heartedness of God towards his creation, towards us as children, especially in Christ Jesus. The goodness of God towards us, the, the, the patience of God towards us. God is patient with us because God loves us. God shows us mercy because God loves us. And God wants our hearts to be saturated with his love. He said that we may know the length. Let me, let me read that in that Ephesians chapter 3, that we might be strengthened with might through the spirit in our inner man Ephesians chapter 3 uh, verse I think 9 to uh, verse 16 17 that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. So love is the thoughts are always good towards us. So every day let our hearts be glad. Let our hearts be full of thanksgiving to God. He said, even as I have loved you, that you love one another, is because He first loved us, that we can love Him with all our hearts. And as we grow in the love of God, that love will permeate every aspect of our being that we cannot help but just be an embodiment of the love of God, dispensing the love of God everywhere we go, making us a light to the world. Love is the reason He joined Himself to us. Love is the reason He created us. Love is the reason He promised to redeem us. Love is the reason He manifested in the flesh. Love is the reason He was healing the sick, doing good works. Love is the reason He went to the cross to die for us. Love is the reason He resurrected. Love is the reason He ascended up on heaven. Love is the reason he now came down as a spirit to now live in us, walking in us, transforming us, regenerating us, conforming us to the glorious image of his son. And love is the reason we are going to be spending eternity with him in the new Jerusalem. What a joy for what God has done for us, the immeasurable love of God. Hallelujah to God the Father. Hallelujah to God the Son. Hallelujah to God the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord, the love of God. Hallelujah.